Well, dear friends in Christ, today we observe the external solemnity of Corpus Christi. And this ex observance should have a great importance for us as traditional Catholics. We know that whenever the Church has instituted a feast uh, by, for the universal Church, it is usually to defend a doctrine that is under attack. And this feast was instituted in the 13th century when the doctrine of the Holy Eucharist, the doctrine of the Real Presence, was under attack and heretics were denying the Real Presence. And as we reflect upon our own times, we have a lot more heretics who deny the existence of our Divine Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. So it is that this great dogma of our Catholic faith is once again under great attack. And as we know in the 1960s, as of 1960, excuse me, yes, 1969, there were many changes that were introduced into the church under the guise of supposedly, of, 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 of under those who are in a, supposedly in authority. And it's interesting to see that all of these changes that took place were to take away devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. Some of the things that took place at communion rails in most of the churches were taken out. People didn't have to kneel anymore for Holy Communion. And they, many people didn't think much of it, except that, okay, communion rails are gone, well, just stand. So that, there, they, these changes were done very incrementally, very slowly, but first the communion rails, and they were told to stand. And if anyone, a lot of, a lot of parishes, if you didn't stand up, if you wanted to kneel down, they would pass right, right by you. They wouldn't give you communion unless you were standing. Then after that, what happened? They began, they began to take away the patent. No longer were they going to receive on the tongue, they were going to receive on their hand. And the patent is made out of gold to show that any particles that fall during Holy Communion, that's our, every single particle of the Blessed Sacrament is our Divine Lord. Our Lord is present under the, under the species of bread and wine, under every, especially under the bread, under every particle. So any particles that fall off during the, off the host during Holy Communion, they fall in the golden patent. But there's no longer any, any reverence in that aspect, in the aspect that they have taken away the patent. So people receive on their hands and there's particles all over the floor. There's no reverence, there's no concept of what they're handling, of what is being given to them. After that, we see that there was supposedly extraordinary ministers that were had. And we see that these extraordinary ministers became very ordinary in most parishes. Very quickly, they, it was just lay people, no longer consecrated hands that were touching the body of our Divine Lord, but just anyone, and, and every, everyone and anyone could distribute communion, touch it with their hands, and that reverence was taken away. And we see that after that, many of the genuflections, uh, the reverence, the kneeling, everything, a lot of these things were taken away. And these all are wonderful reminders of what is taking place on our altar at every Mass that our Divine Lord comes down and dwells in our altars, in our tabernacles, under the species of bread and wine. So it is that, as we see, this has all been a part of a plan of the enemies of the Church to destroy people's devotion. This is something that wasn't didn't just happen by accident, but it was very, very well thought out. The enemies of the Church, the devil, um, inspiring these, these uh, things in people's minds, they took away people's devotion to the Blessed Sacrament. And you see, you go into a modern church, a lot of these churches don't even have supposedly the Blessed Sacrament on their main altar. They put it off to the side. They put it just off, uh, just as a, you know, it's no longer the focal point. It's no longer a, a thing of importance. So, we have to remind ourselves that as we celebrate this external solemnity, that for us as traditional Catholics, we have been given a great grace in having our blessed Lord and, and our, whole, our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament and Holy in Holy in the Holy Eucharist, we can't take this for granted. We can't be unappreciative. And the bishop, we had our retreat in Omaha this past week, and he told us a story that uh, that he experienced. He, as many of you know, he grew up in Chicago, and he belonged to the seven Holy Servite found the seven. Excuse me. Let's see the seven Holy Founders, the Servites. Uh, there in Chicago, and if I'm not mistaken, Southside Chicago, and he belonged to a parish of more than 500, 500 people, and it wasn't just, excuse me, 500 families, so not just 500 people, but 500 families, and obviously that's more than 500 people, but he was saying that this, there was one occasion where they had 40 hours devotion, and that is where our Lord is exposed in the Blessed Sacrament and the Monstrance for 40 hours, and he happened to go in on a Saturday, and he was shocked 
He was just a, a boy at the time, but he was shocked. Out of a parish of more than 500 families, there was only three people in the entire church adoring our Lord. And he was he, and he knelt down and he realized that if he, if any of these people left, our Lord would be alone in the Blessed Sacrament. And especially when he's exposed, that he should always have someone there present. And so he realized that a lot of people, their faith was cold. The people, they were living very lax lives as Catholics. They were not living fervent lives. And so it's no wonder at that time that we see af shortly after that, changes in the church happened. And so many Catholics went with the changes because they weren't living fervent lives. They were being very lax in their faith. So it's no wonder that this great gift was taken away from them because they did not appreciate it. And the bishop truly believes that this great apostasy that we're living, that we see in our day and age, is precisely because the clergy and the laity were living very lax lives and were not very fervent in their Catholic faith. And we, that was just the, upon, it made a great impression that we should be appreciative of what we have. And there was also another priest by the name of Father Clement Kubish. He was, he was in Nebraska. He did not go along with the changes and he was kicked out from his diocese. But he was telling the bishop a story. He's passed away now, God rest his soul. But he was telling the bishop a story that on one occasion before Vatican II, they were having a Corpus Christi procession. They're going around the town with, with the monstrants uh, for Corpus Feast of Corpus Christi. And there was a young woman who was very, she made, she used to make, she would make fun of the Catholics. Uh, she she was very antagonistic towards the Catholics. And as they were going on this procession, on this particular occasion, she was off to the side, across the street. She was dancing wide. She was dancing around, jumping up and down, and she was wildly waving a cookie in the air. She was mocking the Catholics. She was making fun of the Catholics. She was waving this cookie, jumping up and down, and causing uh, a distraction during the solemn procession with the Blessed Sacrament. But it happened that not, not a couple weeks after that occasion, that young lady was in a terrible car accident. And what happened? Her arm was ripped off. The arm that she used to mock the Catholics, to mock God, was ripped right off in this terrible accident. And it's a reminder that people may make fun of our, may make fun of us, may mock us. The enemies of the church may seem to have their, won their victory as we see the great apostasy, the great falling away, and the great confusion that we see. They may have their victory, they may seem to have their victory now, but God is not mocked. And at the end, God's going to send them where they rightly deserve to be sent, and God's going to be victorious in the end. So for us, we have to persevere. We have to be living fervent lives as Catholics, being living lives that are devout, and that we realize and appreciate the great gifts that God has given to us, especially the great gifts of the Mass, Blessed Sacrament, the Holy Priesthood, the ability that we have this beautiful parish, that we have sisters in this parish, that we're able to have a Catholic atmosphere, that we're able to live the liturgy of the church by situ occasions such as this feast of Corpus Christi. So let us realize the enemies of the church have done a good job, and they seem to be victorious, but God in the end is going to have the upper hand, and God's going to be victorious, and we need to be on God's side. We need to appreciate what we have. So go to communion often, as we mentioned in the month of April, the month of the Blessed Sacrament, have this great love. Go to communion as often as possible. Don't wait to go to confession six, seven months. Go right away. Go to communion often. This great gift which God has given to us, let us appreciate it and realize that for us as Catholics, we have been, giving, been given so much and we should appreciate that to him who has been given much, much will be required of him. So on this feast of the solemnity of Corpus Christi, let us take this occasion to appreciate what we have and that's why we're having this solemn, this high mass with incense to give God the very best because He deserves the best that we can give Him. And especially on this occasion, we're having this high mass with incense and then we're going to have the procession with the Blessed Sacrament and benediction. I know it might be a little bit on the longer side, especially for the younger ones. I understand. But imagine, as one of the ladies, one of the mothers was telling me yesterday, this is very good for the children to see the external, to see these, the, the, what, what our faith comprised, what our faith, the beauty of our faith. And so let us appreciate this and let us really realize what's taking place as we process with the Blessed Sacrament. It's taking place at our altar and be appreciative and be living lives that are fervent and lives that are very devout in our Catholic faith. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.